Brother Billy, I have an announcement. Um, next Sunday night at five o'clock, we're going to meet for our first uh, vacation Bible school meeting, and this is going to be the biggest vacation Bible school we've ever had. So we need everybody that can be here to be here. If you can't be here and you want to be involved, let me know. Um, we're going to have committees for um, for uh, the you know activities outside. We're going to have a committee for crafts, a committee of teachers, a committee of people to decorate, a committee of people that help in the kitchen, and we need everybody we can possibly get. So if you can't be here next Sunday night at 5, let me know or let Sister Shelby know or somebody so we can make sure to put you on a list. Yeah. Is everybody here okay? Amen. Okay. So try to be here next Sunday night at 5 o'clock. To plan the uh, vacation Bible school to get everything done, and you need she needs everybody, everybody that can be involved to be involved because it's going to be it's going to be big. Yeah. Uh, we missed last year. We didn't even have one last year. Right. So uh, come out and be a part of that, and uh, God will bless you for it. Amen. Amen. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Turn your uh, hymn book to number two, if you will. Thank you. 
And uh, if you've not been born again, I want you to uh, 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 cheer up just a little bit because I've got good news for you. Yeah. He's here today to do what you need. Yeah. What, and, and if you've never been born again, that's the first thing you need to accept him as your personal Savior. Before I get carried away into this, I want to acknowledge Mr. and Ms. Turner. Is that correct? Uh, first time visitors and praise the Lord for them. I love first time visitors. Yeah. Amen. And I love them a little more when they come back the second time. Don't you? Yeah. <laughs> and they got uh, two beautiful young ladies, their daughters, sitting back there with them. And uh, we appreciate we welcome you this Amen. morning. Amen. Amen. We really do. Last week we had some first time visitors. God's on the move. Yeah. I believe that. Absolutely. And, and, you know, you can throw up your hands and say, oh, this pandemic, we might as well quit for a while and shut down and do nothing. But God's not shut down. That's Amen. true. God's not got his office closed. His ears are not deaf. He's, he still hears prayer. Amen. Yeah. And we ought to trust in God, maybe a little more yeah. than we trust in. Amen. I was reading and I Googled it. You can Google it. Amen. I've learned, you know, y'all don't, a lot of y'all don't even know that I know how to do stuff like that. <laughs> some of you wonder how I'm going to say Google, you know, and pronounce it. And uh, some of you say, well, you did pronounce it correctly. That's okay. We have all kinds of people in the world. But I Googled it, and it's been on my heart, the song, Jesus Loves Me. And I, I just, I thought, what's the history? Anybody know the history behind Jesus Loves Me, the song? What's the history about that song? And so I Googled it and I brought it. I copied it. I had Brian to copy it. I, I, my copier is tore up. He copied it for me. And so the story behind Jesus Loves Me is this. But number one, it's the most popular Christian song worldwide. I didn't know that. The missionaries that go to China, and some of them do today, and China is really... Uh, got a lot of uh, Christians in it, by the way. You wouldn't think that, but it does. That 20% of the Christians, 20% uh, uh, of the population is Christians. Now, they're persecuted over there, but they're Christians. Ain't that so? Mm. Yeah. I, I don't need to go there, but I'm going to. Is it okay to go there, Billy? Yeah. Okay, Billy, it's been his fault. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. We're not persecuted here in America. It's true. We have all the liberties to worship God. They try to take that away. Little by little they try. But we have all the liberties to worship God. But over there, if they find out you're a Christian, you're in danger of losing your life. We should praise God more and respect God more and thank God more here in America than any other nation in the world. Because we have more freedom than any other nation in the world. Absolutely. Back to the, uh, the story behind Jesus loving most popular hymn in the world. The missionaries that go overseas even today choose that as the song to teach their young convicts. The converts, not convicts. We have convicts here. Converts are someone saved by the grace of God. Amen. Uh, and the hymn, it was written by Anna Warner. And she wrote it as a request of her sister. A little child was dying. And she wanted her, she, she was a poet, and she wanted her to write a poem to come. So she penned the word, Jesus loves me. And that's where the song came from. Her, po her poem appeared in a novel, and, and uh, the novel's name was Say and, S and Seal. Say and Seal. So it's been years ago, 1800s, you know. And then, after that, uh, it was a fellow picked it up by the name of Branburn, and he recorded it and made it into a song. There's more verses than what's written in the book in our songbook. The verses written in our songbook is not even exactly like the original verses. It was written as a poem. But we're going to sing it today as a song. And then I want to preach my title of my message would be, guess what it would be? <laughs> Jesus loves me. Why? So I would like somebody to lead that song so I won't get off track here. Billy, can you lead see Jesus loves me? Page 93, I believe it is in the book. 90 what? 96. 96. 
six in the book. You play. Would you, would you come and play? Can y'all hurry up? Don't hurry up for nothing. Just hurry. Man. <laughs> I want these children to sing out Jesus love on the first verse. How many verses you gonna do? I want to do at least three. I want them to sing out on the first verse because I want and y'all don't sing on the first verse. We don't want y'all messing them up. Y'all, but I want y'all to sing and show this congregation how to sing. And let me ask you first: Do you think Jesus loves you? I want y'all to sing like Jesus loves you. Amen. I'm gonna have y'all sing. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong. They are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. sing these last two verses and let's cause the windows to shatter. Let's sing out. Amen. Jesus loves me Wow. 
I remember when I got born again, I've never been the same. Have you ever been the same? I've never. He said, the black minister said, and I will never be the same. He said, I'll never be the same because his word is indestructible, never ending, living word of God. I will never be the same. Jesus, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. That'd be the title of my message. Jesus loves me. This I know. See, I'm not one of those preachers that thinks you wonder where you've been born again or not. If you're sitting here today and you're wondering where you've ever been born again or not, I got news for you. The Bible says you'll know. Yeah. So that's good evidence that you've not been born again. So if you wonder sometimes, I want you to know you can take it to Jesus and, 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 and he'll remind you where you have or not. Amen. That's true. I know you get away from God and you get so far away from God that you, you don't even have communication with God. But I want you to know if you've been born again, you'll know when it happened. Yeah. I believe that with all my heart. Jesus loved me. How do I know that? How do you know that Jesus loves you, children? How do you know you're on the front row that Jesus loves you? How do you know? The song tells you. Jesus loved me. This I know. Why? Because the Bible. That's what he back to the word it is. Because the Bible tells me so. See, you can depend upon God's holy word. Always. You can stand. Uh, I like Connie character said one time, he said, you can stand on God's word. He said he was raised a corporal, and he said his dad was a sharecropper, and that the, uh, had little brothers and sisters, and they was needing milk, and they didn't have food. They didn't know what to do with baby. Uh, they would grow, and they, they grow crops, and he said they didn't even know what to do. And said, so his dad went to church, and he heard the preacher preach that you can stand on the word of God. That it's firm foundation that you can stand on. He said he took his Bible out when he got back from church and went out there and laid it on a flat rock. And he said he got up on that rock and, and put one foot on the Bible and said, God, the preacher said that we could stand on your holy word. He said, my babies are needing some milk and we need some, we need some real fast. I don't know what we're going to do. He said he looked around after he prayed and an old cow has come out of the bushes there with all four of them leaking. Yeah. That was his word. He said they took that cow and milked it and got the baby some milk. Boy, God sure answers prayer. Don't he? Amen. Amen. In an unusual way sometimes, but he sure answers prayer. He said they got the baby's milk. He said he didn't have a newspaper back then, so they run, he wrote on a brown paper sack and went down to the country grocery store and they stuck it on board down there. If anybody's lost the cow, come and, and, and to where he lived there and they could get their cow back. He said that, old, that cow died of old age and nobody ever come to count it. Yeah. <laughs> God's good, isn't he? Amen. God's good. How do I know? The Bible tells me so. The Bible says if we repent of our sins, the Bible says if you repent of your sins, that he's faithful and just to forgive your sins. So I know that when I repent, that he's forgiven. It's true. Because he said he would. Amen. He said he would. Little ones to him belong. Praise the Lord. Ain't you proud for our children? Amen. Yeah. Little ones to him belong. We used to, and we still do, and I still pray. We used to, but a young parent had a child, and someone would dedicate that child prayer, dedicated uh, his little girl, his pretty little girl back there. And they would dedicate that child to God. I, I think that's a practice that should have never been done away with. I think you should dedicate them to God. Amen. Because little ones to him belong. They belong to him. You realize that every child that you ever, every child that's born in this world is a gift from God. It's true. That's what the Bible says. It's a gift from God. And he knows them while they're in the womb. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. That John the Baptist was filled with the Spirit. The only one I know of in history. Filled with the Spirit while he was in the womb. It's true. Yeah. How do I know? The Bible tells me so. The little ones to him belong. They are weak. Why? But he's strong. Yeah. Hey, I'm weak. And you might think you're tough, but you're pretty weak when it comes to some circumstances. But ain't it good that we know that he's strong? 
He can take care of us. Amen. This might be a little unusual preaching this morning, but that's okay. It's what God laid on my heart. I learned a long time ago that you better do what God lays on your heart. It's true. If you don't want to fumble and fall, you better do what God lays on your heart. Jesus loves me. Jesus loved me when I was bad. Like that something? When I was a sinner, Jesus loved me. I can't get over it. I didn't even love myself. Really? Sure. I didn't even love myself. I despised myself. But Jesus loved me. Amen. And it's that love that drove me to him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Did you know love has got a drawing power? It'll draw. If, if there's someone that loves you, you know that loves you, you'll be drawn to them automatically. Because we don't like to be around people that don't love us, do we? We like to be around people that love us. Amen. Jesus loved me when I was a sinner. Jesus loved me when I was sad. When I was a sinner, I was a sad sinner. I was a burden sinner. For years, I was sad. I, you couldn't make me happy. Maybe for a moment or two, then I'd be right back into that same old situation. I was sad once again. But when I got saved, when I got saved, there was a change made. Does that mean, uh, preacher, when you got saved, you've never been sad? No, I don't mean that. But that means that I've got someone to carry my burden now. I had no one to carry it then. I had no one to share it then. But now I've got Jesus. When I'm weak, he's strong. Amen. It's true. Praise the Lord. Jesus loved me. This I know. You can know. You can know. I'm going to touch that. Salvation is real. And you'll know that you've been born again. Because it's like dying and coming back to life. That's a representation of it in the word of God. Yeah. We pass from death unto life. And That's you'll true. live when you got Christ in your heart and life. Yeah. You know, it amazes me. And I don't mean to be critical. Because this is a love message. Oh, you know, it's nice saying that. And love, it ought to be. But it amazes me. It, it amazes me that we're not more excited about the love of Christ that shot yeah. abroad in our heart. Amen. Maybe if we were more proud of it and maybe we expressed it more that the lost would see what they were missing. Amen. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. When a lost person looks at you and, and talks to you, can they tell there's something different? They ought to be able to. Yeah. They ought to be able to. Jesus loved me when I was a sinner. He died for me when I was a sinner. He shed his blood for me when I was a sinner that I might have an opportunity as a free moral agent to choose salvation. You know that you have that choice? A lot of people in the world today don't know they have a choice, but you have a choice. You don't have to serve the devil. You don't have to be sad. You don't have to stay down in the dust. You don't have to worry about your eternal uh, destiny. You can give it to Jesus. Accept him as your personal Savior. Repent of your sins. And you don't have to worry about that no more. Ain't that great? Yeah. That is great. Jesus loves me. This I know. As he loved so long ago. Tracy sings a song. When he was on the cross. When he was on the cross. I was on his mind. While Jesus was on the cross, you was on his mind. He died for you even before you entered this life. He died and shed his blood for you. You know why? Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He loved us long ago, and he loves us right now. It says, takes, takes children on his knees. This is a verse probably not in that in the song. Takes children on his knees and says, let them come to me. Reminds of the scripture where Jesus says, suffer not the little children come unto me for such as like unto the kingdom of God. It's true. Amen. You remember how much fun you had when you were a little child with a bunch of kids? That's a good representation. Good representation. That's going to be in heaven. Pure and innocent. And joy. Amen. Suffer not the little children come and move, such like unto the kingdom of God. Come unto me, all ye 
heavy, all yet labor, heavy labor. And I will give you rest. Jesus promises that. He said, if you'll come unto me if you're heavy laden and you're heavy with labor and you're laboring in things, come unto me. I'll give you rest. They have better rest nowhere than the rest that Jesus gives. Jesus loves me and loves me still. Praise God. <coughs> First says, Jesus loved me and loved me still. Walk with me. Walk with me on my way. Waiting as a friend to give light and love to all who live. Wow. Jesus loves me still. Not only did Jesus love me in salvation, he still loves me. Isn't that something? That is something. He loves me. He loves me. He loves me. Give me a favor. Say, he loves me. He loves me. Say it loud now. He loves me. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Act like some little children. You can call on them and they'll holler. You know, that's good. He loves me. Wow. I'm glad. He is the light of the world. That's what he said. And then he says to us, Christians, ye are the light of the world. City set on a, 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 a hill cannot be hid. It's all lit up. You don't light a candle and put it under a bushel. You don't do that. You put it on a candlestick. He said, ye are the light of the world. We're the hope. We're the hope. We are the hope of getting the message to the lost and dying world. God uses us to do that. That's our mission. Jesus loved me still. You know what he promised? He said, no wonder we love Jesus. No wonder if you love Jesus. He said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Right. No one's ever been forsaken by Jesus. <laughs> now, there's those that's forsaken Jesus for the world, but Jesus has never forsaken no one. If they love him and they care for him, he's right there with them. He's right there with them. Jesus loves me, he who dies. I think about Calvary. I think about Calvary and the suffering and he died. Jesus loved me. He who died. You know why he died? Oh, did Jesus want to die? He didn't want to die. If you read the prior, you see the scripture in the garden of Gethsemane there as he prayed, Father, let this cup pass from me, but nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. He suffered just like a man. He was in the flesh, although he was God in the flesh. He suffered the pains and agony as you and I would have suffered if we went through that. And he did it for you and I. Jesus loved me, he who died. Why did he do that? Because he loved us so much that he wanted to abide with us. <coughs> and when he left, when he left, uh, left earth and ascended to heaven, the last thing he says, I go and prepare a place for you. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I go and prepare a place for you that where I am, there ye may be also. Yeah. Jesus wants to abide with us. He wants to companion with us. Amen. He loves us. Anybody you love, you want to be around. You want them very close, don't you? Anybody you love. You know, how many grandparents here? Oh, yeah. yeah. Be proud of it. Amen. Do you like to see your grandchildren come? Yeah. Uh, you don't have to hold your head up. Don't you treat them just a little bit better than you did your children. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You might treat your children well, but you treat them just a little bit better. Jesus loves us. He loves us. He treats us so good that he couldn't treat us no better. Mm. <clears throat> Never, he says to him that he died for us, that he would wash away our sin. Huh. And let the little child come in. He says, when you come to him, you've got to come as a little child. Humble as a little child. You can't come with pride. You've got to be come. And he said, uh, but he said, he will wash away my sins. Let the little child come in. What he means is we let that love and compassion, that sincerity, that innocence of a little child come in our heart and life when we get forgiveness of our sin. You know what he says about our sins? We're forgiven. He loves us. He really loves us. You know what? 
you know how much what he says about those sins that's been forgiven? He didn't put them in a bag. He didn't put them in a, 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 a lockbox or, or, or safe and lock them up to break them out and remind you. He didn't do that. You know what he did with them? Some of you know what he did with them. He cast them away to never be remembered anymore. Amen. It's true. I think if he says, I cast them away to never be remembered, I forget them. I don't want to remember them anymore. I think we should do the same thing, don't you? Yeah. Quit digging them back up and quit reminding ourselves of them, cast them away and leave them there. Amen. Old preacher said it when it's on the blood, leave it on the blood. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. The last verse, and I don't know where it's in the song or not, book or not, but this is one of the originals where it is or not. Jesus loved me. <coughs> he will stay. Wow. It ain't a fly the night thing. Well, men and women in the day in which we live that get married and they love each other so much. A year or so down the road, if it lasts that long nowadays, they don't love each other no more. They separate. Well, parents that have children brought in their home, you might like this, but it's so true. Children brought in their home, born in their home, dads and moms, and all they are precious to them, they love them, but then they sort of cast them away because out of other loves more than those children. Jesus don't cast us away. Jesus loved me. He will stay. He'll stay. You want know something permanent? Get Jesus in your heart and mind. He will stay. Amen. You know, even if you make a mistake, he don't part from you. He'll stay. He'll reprove you. He'll rebuke you. He'll bring you into repentance, but he'll stay. <coughs> Isn't that something? In order for him to leave, you'd have to rebel totally against him. Deny him. Without that, he's going to stay. He's going to stay close beside me all the way. He said, I'll go with you all the way, even to the ends of the world. Do you love Jesus? Yes. Jesus loves you. <coughs> Jesus loves you. Thy hast bled and died for me. That's one of the verses that she wrote. Thy hast bled and died for me. I will henceforth live for thee. How about it, folks? After all he's done, we ought to live for him. Yeah. Jesus loves me. Let me ask you front row people here. Do y'all love Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. Do y'all love Jesus? Let's all say, yeah, I like this little girl right here. Do y'all love Jesus? Yeah. All right. All right. Now let me ask you. I know you're not children, but I want you to be honest. Do you love Jesus? Yes. 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 Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to tell you why I ask you that. Because I want to remind you that he loves you. Wherever you're at, whatever state you're in, you're in trouble, you're in poverty, you're in sickness, you're in dispute. <coughs> Our life is wonderful for you. Any state that you're in, Jesus loves you. And he wants to help you. He wants, to, he wants you to follow him. He wants to be with you. He wants to guide you. He loves you. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible, the ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Why? The Bible tells me so. If you're lost here today, I pray that you'll take advantage of this opportunity that Jesus has offered you. The Sister Gloria comes and plays soft on the piano as all of you stand this morning. If you're not where you ought to be with Jesus, Get there today. He wants you to be in a close relationship with him. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you so much enough to, to, to allow the Holy Spirit to deal with you and let you know just what you ought to do right now. That's love. That is love. He cares. When nobody else cares about you or what, what, any, or what you're going through or, or your status in life, he cares. And he loves you. You need to 
come and love him back? If you do, would you just walk down an aisle? We'll pray with you. Maybe someone here has never accepted Jesus as their personal Savior. And the Lord's been dealing with them. And they thought, if I knew what to do, I would do it. If the Lord's been dealing with you and you need to accept him as your Savior, if you walk down an aisle, I won't give you my opinion. I'll take God's holy word and show you the simple thing that you've got to do. You've got to realize you're a sinner. You've got to be sorry for your sins. You've got to pray for forgiveness of those sins. You've got to receive Jesus. Hold your heart. Receive Jesus in your heart. Need to do that today. Moments of time. You already know what you need to do. Do it for your own benefit and showing your love to Christ. Do it. Anyone? All hearts clear. Thank you, Lord. Remember, search night. Please pray. Come back, plan, pray. All the members, of the financial board, and the ministerial board is all meeting tonight. We'd like to. We got some things to uh, do. We're building down here at Vacation Bible School. We just need to come up with some funds for all of that. And uh, we just need to meet. So we're here at 6 o'clock this evening. Uh, our youth, we're having a youth program tonight. Our youth, I think they got some special things they're going to do tonight. Uh, especially some special food. So uh, y'all come. And adults, you're welcome. You're welcome. You come too. Amen. Anybody got anything to say before we dismiss? Brother Frank, remember the Bogle family? I work with a guy, his name is Arthur Bogle. He lost his mom and her funerals today. Amen. Remember this, the bereaved family. Listen to the mom. That's a big loss for us. When you lose your mom. Brother Frank, I'd like for the church to uh, remember Lee in prayer today. He's moving from Nashville to North Carolina. He's on the road today driving. And I just... Pray that the Lord will give him safe passage so that he will get there safely. Amen. Remember that prayer also. Amen. I'd like to ask prayer for Steve Colby. Yes. Having a hard time. Pray for our stroke supervisor. Right? He's, pray. Re he's resigned now. But he's Is he? <coughs> he's had a bad accident and, and we need to pray for him. Pray for him. And also for his wife, Bonnie. <coughs> yes. Pray for our family. Amen. Our heart's clear. So, I've spoken to request. How many out request? Just let like, raise your hand. If you do. Amen. We can pray for that. God knows you. God knows all of you. Let's pray for all of you this week. Let's just pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, Lord, for your love. I thank you, Lord, for your long suffering to us, Lord. And I ask God, Lord, as those hands represent, and some of them spoke before, Lord, the request. I pray for them. I pray for each one of them, Father. You heard the word that's spoken and the request made. You read the hearts of those who just raised their hand, Lord, and you know well each one of the uh, prayer requests that was made. I ask God that you would just answer each one of them. And God, I pray for the church and I pray for the people, Lord. Let our services, Lord, be enlightening. Let us talk about you. And Lord, I pray you'll always be in the midst when we worship you and serve you. I ask this, Lord, that you'll help us make decisions, Lord, as a church, wise decisions, those that will be pleasing to you, and those, Lord, that will enlarge your kingdom. I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.